Hello, welcome to Yellow Door Urban Homestead. I am Asia and I'm an urban gardener growing in a small space in my backyard. Hey y'all. <laughs> So I know it's been a while. I know it's been a while. Um, and I put up my post today. I appreciate everybody who supported me when I said I was completely exhausted <laughs> from work. Um, and so I am back. I'm going to go. I have read every comment. Of course, I have not uh, commented back because that's just how life goes sometimes. So look, I'm out in the garden tonight. We're going to do a garden tour. But someone left a comment on one of my older videos and oh my goodness, I feel like I have to speak to it because I don't want anyone, city noises, to think that they have a reason not to garden. So we're gonna talk about that real quick and then we're gonna get into this garden tour because it's already kinda late. I left work early so I could make sure I got a video up <laughs> tonight for y'all, but also, um, as I always talk about my stool, I love my little stool. It's from Home and Garden Trends. Um, there's a link always below. I love this stool. It's one of those things that like you didn't know you needed until you had it. So um, it's good for sitting like I'm doing tonight. So I was sitting out here and just kind of looking because everything has grown so much. I absolutely, I'm so excited. And y'all know I had to dig all these roots out these beds and I didn't do well in the summer. So I'm super excited to see how well everything is growing. Um, and things are not leggy and, and stretching for sun like I'm really loving the fall garden but anywho um, you can you can uh, sit on it you can also <laughs> I'm gonna show you kneel on it so you know yeah and it comes with a little pouch for you to put your stuff in mine is a little old but it's still working just fine so what I wanted to talk about, and I did not screenshot it, I read it to make sure that, you know, I see you all's comments. I really enjoy reading comments um, and responding to them when I get my, my time to. So someone left a comment and they said something to the fact of like, I've been afraid to garden or I didn't want to garden, but then when you said I could buy starts, <gasps> oh God, yes, you absolutely could buy starts. Listen, starting your seed, your, your plants from seed, that is awesome. Don't get me wrong. I love starting my plants from seed. It's, it's cheaper to start them from seed. But listen, if you want to garden and either you don't have time, you don't have space, you're just not having any luck with it, absolutely go to a feed and seed store, a big box store. Like I don't ever want people to think that like buying your starts from the store is like a bad thing. Listen, if you are growing your food, after you put it in that soil and you grow it, then you grew it, okay? That's all I'm gonna say. Um, but you know, like you could go to a farmer's market. They uh, normally have plant starts if you have one in your area, but please don't not garden because you're not growing from seed. And I had saw a meme, I think on Instagram, and they were like, if a gardener tells you that they grew their garden from seed, that's a flex. Okay, cool, it is a flex. It, it, it is what it is, but at the end of the day, regardless of how you got them plants started, you grew your own food. So please, 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 if you gotta buy starts, buy starts. This whole fall garden is starts, okay? <laughs> With the exception, they taking me out with all this noise tonight. With the exception of like the radish and the turnips, those aren't from, from um, start. And mostly because they do better, what I've read from my research, they do better if you just plant them directly. But let me also tell you that the only reason why I was super successful with these this year is because I had a sprinkler. But listen, I just wanted to take time in this first part of this video that most people will watch to say, if you have to buy starts, buy starts as long as you are growing. Okay, high five me. High five me in the comments. <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and get into this garden tour before we lose the light. How have y'all been? I feel like I've been away. Tell me how you have been. Tell me how your garden doing. Tell me all of that. And we're gonna walk around and see what my garden looking like. <laughs> so we're gonna start right here, y'all, tonight. And I know it's so random. I'm in the middle of the garden somewhere. But this is a tomato that just won't die, right? But it will die soon because I have frost in my 10-day forecast. 
But what I'm really interested in showing you is look at the artichoke. It's so pretty. If you've been here for a while, then you know my artichoke plant plants, they pretty much like looked horrible all summer long because artichokes prefer to be in cooler weather. Let me show you what is happening with these artichokes now that the weather has cooled down. We remember, this is the one I planted this year. It looked terrible all year long. Some collards in this bed too. But look at that one. It is so pretty. Like the foliage is just beautiful. And I'm probably not gonna get an artichoke this year. Probably in 2024, cause this is two years old, I think. But it just looks so pretty, y'all. And like, I'm so excited <laughs> for the artichokes. Um, so since we started with the artichokes, let's move over. And this is the radishes, carrots, turnips, rutabaga. Um, and so my parsnips never did make an appearance, but the dinosaur kale is still there that we planted together. It's gonna take it a minute to get big, but in the spring, more than likely I'll get a nice little harvest. Um, I harvested a bunch of radishes out of here yesterday. If I still have the picture, I'll put it up on the screen. Um, and those are turnips back here. And the carrots <laughs> that I started in the bed are looking really good. They still need to be thinned. And the ones back here got shaded by everything around it. So eventually I'm going to end up, you know, uh, harvesting the things around it and they will start to get light and they should start growing. Of course, in the fall, they're gonna grow, you know, a little bit slower than if it was summertime. Um, but the point is, they will grow. <laughs> and so y'all look at my kohlrabi. It's pretty much ready to harvest. I could harvest these now, but they're looking so good. This is the one that was getting eaten up in the middle. Had gotten eaten all the way down, honestly. And that one is doing really good. It's kohlrabi all the way down this bed. I'm excited, can y'all see it? Kohlrabi is like one of my favorite fall vegetables. It tastes like a broccoli stem, but it has a cabbage flavor. <laughs> so I really, really love that. Um, and I eat it like all year, all fall long if I grow enough. And so I basically make them into the shape of a french fry and bread them a little bit, put a little bit of flour on it, not a lot. And then I put them in the oven. They are delicious. Now they look like a french fry. They do not taste like a french fry, but they are delicious. And so there's kohlrabi in the first two lines here. Kohlrabi in the first two lines there. Those were planted much later than the ones that's in the bed. And then I have two more over here. And they are pretty much ready for harvesting too. So I definitely see some kohlrabi in my future this weekend. <laughs> the leeks are starting to look amazing. If y'all remember when I showed y'all, not, not that one. <laughs> <laughs> or, or this one but anyway y'all remember when i showed y'all these before everything was like super skinny they are very much thickening up like look at that one i cannot wait i've told you before i do not know what leeks taste like i don't even know if i like them i'm just excited that i am growing them and i feel like just because i grew them in my backyard and they will be fresh out of the garden that i'm gonna think they're delicious most things i do there's bugs out here. <laughs> Most things that I'm growing in the garden, like I didn't eat before, but I eat them now, especially the things in the fall garden. Right behind the leeks, we have broccoli. So that's a broccoli, 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 broccoli. All of these broccoli um, back here and they're growing nicely. I'm excited. I'm not seeing any hedge yet, but they are starting to turn in on themselves. Oh, yep, there's a tiny one in there. So we'll probably start seeing broccoli soon. I wanted a lot of broccoli this year because I wanted to be able to uh, preserve it. And so um, there's broccoli in this bed right here. There's broccoli in that bed and there's broccoli over there. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't plant all of my stuff in the same bed just because my thought is if a pest finds it in one bed maybe it'll stay in that bed and then I'll still get my harvest in another bed so that's why I do it I also like the way that it just looks different I like that it doesn't all look the same in every day so that's why I do it I think it's I think it's pretty that way I do my summer garden that way too <laughs> 
All right, over here you have some cabbage and you can see the leaves are starting to stand up. So I'm hoping a cabbage head shows up there. And then we have some collards here and this is another cabbage and so is that one. That one little dinosaur kale over there is taking its own little time trying to grow, but I imagine it's shaded. So I'm not worrying about it too much. And then over here where I showed you the um, kohlrabi in the front, we have cabbage right behind it and it's looking amazing. A little bit of pest pressure, but not in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> then you have more collards right here and these collards have gotten eaten up pretty bad so they're making their way back but I'm waiting for that frost because collards after a frost delicious <laughs> more more broccoli back here like I said there's only three in this bed and that plant got eaten pretty bad everything over on this side for whatever reason got eaten up pretty bad <laughs> and then we have kale I think this is a uh, purple kale or red kale. I'm not really sure, but I got it from my local feed and seed store. <laughs> and then right beside it is the other kohlrabi I was telling you about. There's lots of Swiss chard. I cannot wait for that to get big and bushy. Swiss chard is a good way to add some color to your fall garden because fall gardens are like very green. Nothing wrong with that. But if you want to add some color, you could drop some of these in, in random places and then you get some color in your garden for fall and they will grow all the way through fall and probably all the way through spring and right into summer because they're very hardy. Probably it'd be a little bitter, but you can still have the color. <laughs> right here we have some more cabbage. Uh, like I said, a little bit eaten up, but the middle leaves are looking really good. Um, there are onions in here that are trying to come up as well, but I wouldn't be able to point you to them at this moment <laughs> because the garden bed is filling out so well. And then on the other side, we have a few more collards. This bed gets shaded quite a bit, and so that would make sense why these collards aren't as big yet. And then you have more broccoli back here. This one is leaning a little bit, but you got more broccoli, but you can also see it's also a little leggy. They all are because they're trying to lean to the sun, which I understand that that's a thing. <laughs> so my first frost should be here next Thursday, according to the forecast right now. So what I'm going to show you now are the things that aren't going to make it through the frost before the frost comes. So that Wednesday night, I'll be out here picking everything if the forecast stays at 32. All of my little Trombocino squash, and I'm gonna pick her too. <laughs> hey, Pop. Hey, girl. Hey. Hey. Hey, sweetie. Hey, my sweetie. All of the, we will have to pick. That's a nice size one. It's feeling like this or looking like this because it got stuck and I pulled it out, but it still kind of grew that way. All of the loofah, so like these are already drying, but they'll probably have to finish in the house. This green one, I, I'll just sit it downstairs and it'll end up drying throughout the season. But I think we got a decent amount of loofah. We'll have to pick all of that come Wednesday night of next week. And so we still have tomatoes growing. Um, and this is probably gonna end up a fried green tomato. There's another little one trying to grow down here. All of the peppers are still alive, still green, still lush. However, they are going to die at the frosty. We still have them ripening. Oh, and we got a bunch of tomatoes. They're paste tomatoes, but they're all still green. So all of this will be gone by the time you see a next garden tour more than likely because we will have gotten our first frost. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so there are more peppers over here. These are all pepper plants too, still ripening up. Um, but I don't expect to get too many more to ripen between now and Thursday. And the basil is just not happy about the cold. The basil is not happy. So that's almost gone at this point. <laughs> and someone asked me about the beets. There are beets all through these beds, but I did not give them a lot of space in my garden because I'm not 
great at growing them but i did want to give myself a chance to try again um so they also may be getting shaded i'm gonna show you there you go they're all throughout the beds honestly but i didn't want to take up too much space and so i did i just did what they call interplanting so in the bed by the orchard you can see everything is growing nicely this is mostly collards and kale and to keep up with it that's one of the kale that was getting eaten down that's the other one <laughs> so they were getting eaten down and now they're getting shaded so we'll see i think they're those will be spring harvest for sure it's getting dark out here my battery went dead i had to charge one well i had to charge all of them they were all dead so i'm gonna try to hurry up finish this guard tour for y'all <laughs> And I was supposed to be showing you the summer stuff and got completely sidetracked, right? But I got to show y'all the roseo, the sorrel. I got to show it to you because in a week or so, it may be gone, but it's just so beautiful. <laughs> Look, y'all. I mean, it's literally, that's three plants taken up almost going into the walkway. And there are definitely roseo growing on them. There's some of them are a little small, probably won't get a harvest from the smaller ones, but I got some bigger ones back here. <laughs> look, look how pretty. I'll be harvesting these before the frost. I think I have to, if somebody knows, tell me. If I don't, let me know, cause I'm gonna leave them. I think I do, but look at all of them. It's just such a pretty bush. And you know, there's one over here by itself i'm not seeing a lot of roselle on it so i probably won't plant one in this area next year because people do ask me like do i practice crop rotation i do not i do not because i don't have a lot of space and so things that grow that big can't be in a front bed or or anything like that and so i do not practice crop rotation um sometimes it has bitten me in the butt so for instance, I have planted cherry tomatoes here on this trellis for the last two years. They did not do well this year. I probably won't plant cherry tomatoes there next year because they've done awful. But as a rule of thumb for me, I don't because I don't have enough space. <laughs> oh, one more bed. I forgot about this bed over here. So this is a cabbage, a cabbage, and these are kale, I think. They're either kale or collards, I can't remember. The nasturtium is still trying to grow. That's gonna die <laughs> in the frost. And then, like I said, there's uh, beets everywhere. So there's some beets right here, and I definitely have to thin these. I thin them in the beds, like in the um, block beds, but I have forgotten to thin them over here. And so I do still need to thin those. Um, and I might just let them grow uh, for the leaves because beet greens are delicious. Um, and so let me show you this terrible flower bed. I mean, this flower bed gonna fight. We're gonna have to work on this. I have no idea why this flower bed is not doing what I want it to do. <laughs> look at it, y'all. I mean, it just look terrible. It looked terrible. It's doing better down here where there's more shade because these are pansies. Uh, but this end, uh-uh, it's not doing much. What I think I'm gonna do, and I may not be successful, and I may not, you know, they may come up in in spring, is I think I'm going to plant some uh, snapdragon seeds. And so when I say plant, I'm going to toss them into the bed because snapdragon seeds are so small. Um, so I'm probably just gonna toss them into the bed and then we'll see what we get in spring because that bed is not playing fair. <laughs> that bed is not playing fair this fall. Another thing that is still going on is the bean trellis. We ate beans off of this trellis yesterday. Um, it's still going and I'm just gonna let it go because I'm gonna let it go. <laughs> and there's more peppers here. These are the green peppers I was showing you all a while ago. They're, they don't seem to be turning it hasn't been very warm here and so um you know pepper is like heat and sun and it just not has, has not been very warm the next few days like the next i think four days will be in the 80s but we haven't been in the 80s in quite some time so i'm gonna give them some time see if they ripen up um maybe over these four days because they've been on the plant for i don't know how long so they've been on the plant and they aren't ripening maybe these warm days will help who knows um so we'll see then of course there's still peppers 
all on this back row too. And these, if you remember, I said I'm not taking care of them anymore. Yeah, <laughs> these look horrible because they are in the sun all day and I'm not honestly even watering them. Like if they don't get what they need from the sprinkler, they just don't get it. I'm not going through a hand warding the peppers either. Like it's, it's pretty much the end of their time. <laughs> And then there's more peppers back here. These are doing a little bit better because they don't get as much sun as the ones over there. Um, but yeah, and this like this plant, this one is full of peppers. That's what I showed in the intro. It's just full of peppers. <laughs> so if nothing else, I'm gonna get some. Um, I'm gonna get some green peppers when it's time for us to harvest all of this stuff. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to like share subscribe don't forget to visit me over on instagram where i post about the things going on in the garden almost every day bye y'all